I'm here with Rick Morano, the head construction guy that builds everything, moves the dirt around. And tell me a little bit about this project. This project uh, it started two years ago. I got called like four years ago to start, but stuff in Central America takes a little longer. And uh, it's the first dive project in El Salvador, first real 18 holes in El Salvador. So it's been pretty good. We moved the first year a million two cubic meters. And I heard you like capped off a mountain. Capped off a lot of mountains. Everything you see around us is used to be mountain tops. This was higher than the crane top when I knocked it down to build all this here. Everything here was a lot of mass movement. And it started out that they didn't want to move any dirt. A lot of uh, these subdivisions out here, they don't mind building on slopes. And I started a few American style lots where they're stepped down and we've started constructing lots now. So it's been pretty good. It's interesting. First time working in Central America. Um, it's good. It's good. It's different. I was afraid to come, I think, the first time I came here. And once I got here, it's I've been really friendly. Yeah, it's, it's friendly. Easy, it's all safe. Yeah. I think as Americans, we don't really realize what's out in the world. I mean, we yeah. see us as, as a country, and we just in general take it for granted that we're the only place like that. All you gotta do is hop in the car and drive 14,000 miles, and you'll be in Rio. Rio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely won't probably do that, but that's an interesting trip, you guys. So, Rick, tell me a little bit about how you came to the game of golf. I originally uh, was a wrestler, in in. Uh, so I never got to play golf as a kid, but it wasn't until I was in the military in the Air Force and I had a buddy that played golf and I got to play one time with him and his dad and I played softball a lot in the military and baseball as a kid growing up and I just liked to hit the ball far so I'd go with him to the range and I was able to, to do pretty well, but I, I was able to hit the ball a ways. I, I get it out there past probably 90% of the people so it's pretty fun and then from there I just learned to play by myself. Never took any lessons, went to the range at night because I was embarrassed to play with people during the day until I got to where I thought I was comfortable to play. So were you here the first day before any dirt was moved? I was the first person to move any dirt in the project. I was here when it was a jungle and it was very, you see the backdrop in the back, we looked more dense than it was out there. I mean we had, there was trees everywhere. It was kind of neat. I'd never been to the jungles and it, that's what it looked like here. We were here with uh, 100 guys in machetes was my first original crew and we'd go through chopping down trees. I'd never seen people use machetes to cut trees down and they're pretty impressive. These are like Ginsu's in, in Central America. They, they can slice through anything with those things. So it was impressive. It was pretty neat. So, so tell me how uh, a little bit about how the land has changed, what you moved around. And the land here has changed dramatically because before we were here, I mean, everything was just mountains. You couldn't really have, everything was ravines. This used to be a bunch of breaks in this area. There's rivers, huge rivers that, the water that comes here, they get, on an average, in a three month period, you get about between three and six feet of water of rain, depending on the rainy season. I've been here, it's my third rainy season. The first season we were here, we had a flood in 2011, and it was, I mean, I saw the roads close, uh, mountains come down with mud slides, and people really damaged, and that really destroyed us. The first year, we were under construction on the golf course at the time. Um, the second year was light, so we were able to do what you see here, and move the dirt, and get stuff to where it looks like a golf course. But these were all just coffee fields, and, and you can see, obviously, the slopes in the back where you have the cornfields is something where these people plant on, on very steep inclines and it's all done by hand. So, I mean, they never had to do anything with machines. They've never even got into it. It's chopped by hand. But here we moved all the dirt to get down and fill these ravines to create the golf course below. And this would give a great backdrop for all the houses. Houses are, uh, are surrounding the whole golf course and they're up above so they'll get the, more of a stadium view. We just played an awesome six holes. We played one, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and eighteen. And I guess you got four more that are deforest, yep. and then you got the forest still yeah, out get there. Get back into the forest. The next holes, which will be different from what is here, because we don't have any dirt movement. We're going to shape what's naturally there. So we're going to cut trees. So the next plant, the next side of the golf course will be all in rivers, surrounded by trees. It'll be beautiful. I'm looking forward to doing the next nine holes and. and it should be a lot, two different views. You get an open view and a, and a view that you're going to be in a, in a forest. It's going to be beautiful, spectacular. Yeah, you're amongst volcanoes here. You have the beach, the beach. not too far. You, you've been a resident of El Salvador. Tell me a little bit about the country and living here. I, I actually like living here. It's very uh, slow paced, but it's very fast paced at the same time. It's hard to say that because everyone's quick to get nowhere, I think. That's, that's how I'd put it. Um, it's very friendly people. The food here is great. Um, they're, they have everything we have in the States. It's, it's very, I like the living, 
conditions here. It's it's mild and and the temperature is great. I think it's for me it's probably one of the best places I've been as far as overall climate in in the world. It's very nice. You got trees, shade, and you, like you said, you have the beach. You have volcanoes. You can go have dinner and have panoramic views to eat. And then you have you know tons of shade, the trees, the birds, different things. I've never seen a lot of the stuff that's here, so it's pretty neat. So you've heard a little bit about this Andy Reistetter guy and his journey to Olympic golf. What, what do you think of that guy? That's impressive. I'm that, first time you know I met him, so it's uh, I'm, I'm very impressed. I, I wish I had the time I'd drive with you. It's something that I've always wanted to travel as a kid, and I've been doing it since I got out of high school, actually. And uh, it's amazing. I, Wait to see your journey. I hope I, I get to see your documentary and it comes out neat. I think it's impressive. I'm glad that golf is in back in the Olympic or back in the Olympics and you get to document it. So I'd be interesting. I've been waiting to see something like that. I'll tell you, I love my torch, you know, my 92 Infinity, but I could really use this golf cart you got here to get maybe just go right through the Daring Gap and take a shortcut. That'd be great. We have plenty of them, so that'd be more. I, I would recommend you take something like that. I think if I would have met you before you took off, I'd have told you to bring a Land Rover because the roads here, you never know what you're going to get to. I think El Salvador, for, in general, has very good roads, and uh, I don't know how it goes from here on out or what type of trip you're taking, but I think you, you'll encounter some serious road as you go, you really need four-wheel drive. Well, Rick, you've uh, created a beautiful place here. I really enjoyed the six holes. I can't wait to play the full 18. Thank you so much for the interview, and best awesome. of luck on the rest of the project. Pleasure meeting you. Come back when we're finished.